that context, right? Um, this chapter is all about understanding, yes, the role of manager, but in a specified context. When the context changes, does it warrant for manager to change, adapt, right? New ways. Remember last time, the last chapter we talked about that uh, the three most important challenges to managers are innovation, sustainability, and, and and the customers, right? So somebody will tell me again that why do you think customers are very important to a manager's role? Why it has become a challenge to uh, cater to customers to their utmost satisfaction? Why it is important? Because customers who run the business. Without customers, you wouldn't have any right? So when the, the when the expectations of customers are continually changing, which means that warrants for that you want to come up with strategies, right, to continually cater to their needs, right? Uh, just just a quick example there. Uh, remember, a few years back, I mean, I'm talking about the start of the 21st century. Uh, I'm talking about why generation, and I'll tell you, let's explain you in this part of the um, second chapter as well, like uh, what are the, the, the different types of generations starting from uh, early boomers. Uh, but anyways, at my age, when I was growing up, when I popped into uh, uh, an electrical store, electronic store, uh, for example, the store called, called Comet, Right? And if I want to buy a DSLR camera, I was really dependent on the information provided by the assistant. Right? So he would tell me what are the specs of the camera and all that. And I would I mean I would rely on his knowledge, best knowledge. And I would say that whatever you would deduct, whatever the way you would suggest me, I would take my decision in light of your knowledge, right? But have you seen today this paradigm shift where you step into the store? Right, and you want to buy a DSLR camera, and just before the sales assistant or sales manager could tell you something about that product, you start telling the person about the product that has this got this much power of the lens and so on. So you start telling him the specs. So you kind of double checking that the camera has got these specs. In fact, before popping into the store, before stepping into the store you know what you are buying, right? That is the paradigm shift. Customers' expectations have changed, right? You can't bluff them anymore with uh, uncompatible prices, with, um, with quality that they wouldn't expect at that price, right? So you got to, you got to make sure that customers go on to appreciate the true value of the product. Right? So hence change, managers got to think on their toes, right? That how we can on continually basis, how we can go on to get to the individual needs of our customers, right? That's very important. Now within this chapter we will see that where there are certain challenges to the manager, uh, uh, the role of the manager or to the job of the manager. Uh, Managers operate in a certain context, right? There are certain environmental challenges that they got to come across and then they got to devise strategies to encounter those yeah. challenges, right? Um, now, starting with uh, the first from slide, what it says. Uh, it says about two views in management, right? So, talk, if I ask you, let's say if I uh, if I throw a question to you guys and I ask you that, what do you think uh, when a business goes down, where the responsibility lies? Does it lie more with the manager or more with the external environment? It's it's a both. Both. It's a right, okay, I'm glad you said both. I'm glad you said both. Right. Now, let's say when we talk about that, the responsibility lies with the manager, right? What kind of situations these are? When the manager did not do a good job with satisfying customers. In the very first chapter, yeah. in the very first chapter when we talked about the manager's roles, what kind of skills he should possess and all that, right? So maybe he's not he's engaging. Very good. Excellent. Right, I thought you were saying something. 
yes, maybe he was not able to better monitor or control the employees over a period of time, right? Now, similarly, there could be circumstances where your external pressures have been intensified. Your external pressure, pressures are, are such of a nature that the managers have no control over the over over the business or over the conduct of the processes of the business or uh, if a business is keep keep on losing customers, right? Uh, then a manager might end up and say that we cannot do anything because there are some external pressures. A manager, a manager might uh, say to CEO that look, you know that there is a economic slump going on. There is an economic turmoil. We look at the economic turmoil of 2008. Right? Uh, except few businesses, there are certain exceptions, and those exceptions have got very uh, genuine reasons which we can discuss at a later point, where most of the businesses were hit by that economic turmoil. Now, in these kind of scenarios, uh, you cannot have managers accountable for all of the adverse performance of an organization. You get my point. Okay, very good. That's a good point. That's a fair point. What else? What, else? What, else? what kind of external pressures are we talking about? She made a very valid point. So, thinking along the same lines, what do you think? So maybe change the government uh, Very good. The change in the governmental laws and policies might influence your business. What else? Some data comes in. Some data comes in. That's good. That's a fair point as well. Good competition. Competition. I mean, you might get. Remember the example last time I was giving you about Blockbuster and Netflix? Right, so you you you've seen a giant competitor who had an edge over providing catering to customers online, and you had blockbusters had as retail stores, right? But they didn't catch up, didn't catch up with the Netflix. They didn't beat up their strategies on time, and hence they were lagging. Like right, and they were forced out of the business with the Netflix catching. To dominate shares of the market, right? Now, what kind of other pressures that you are thinking right now in your minds and I before I move on, and obviously we'll discuss all of the points one by one. But what kind of other pressures you can think of? So societal pressures. Very good. Societal pressures. How come? Can you explain it with an example? So like uh, Starbucks. Yes. Uh, they recent, uh, back in 2014, there was a scandal that they're supporting. Uh, Okay, that's good. That's a big point. So the population that were buying the product was more of a different category. Started avoiding. And just to add, it was all over social media, right? Uh, that was a catalyst. I mean, that that really motivated people to actually buy about those products. So yes, societal pressures. I mean, within we 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 live in societies where we have got certain behaviors which are driven by some attitude that we have developed over the time as a nation. Then we've got certain norms, we've got certain beliefs, and adhering to those norms, beliefs, what we do, we behave in a certain way. Right? So, uh, he's right when then, uh, when, uh, uh, whenever you see aggression from Israel, right, uh, 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 against the Palestine, Right? Then there, there is an upsurge within Pakistan where people start boycotting the products that are coming from Israel. Right? All different parts of the world. It does even, even it happens even in Britain as well. Right? Uh, uh, remember, there was a time when a documentary came out, whatever, in Britain, and I've seen that. A do BBC aired a documentary telling, that, uh, telling about horrific conditions in which. Primark, one of the major retail store, a competitive store, fashion brand, right? Because their products were mostly coming from uh, third world, like Bangladesh and China, right? So they showed the air, doc air documentary showing that how the, about the horrific conditions in which employees were forced to work, right? So the and what was in in an aftermath, what happened that people for a considerable uh, uh, time, stop buying the products from the driver. That has. So, so your society asserts certain level of pressure on organizations you've got to keep in mind because they're very important stakeholders. Also, false rumors. Like, uh, yes, false rumors could play. There was a reporter coming 
company in common business, the water will be clean, stop trying to use that and water it. Yes, you are right. Yes, yes, sometimes, sometimes, um, uh, sometimes organizations can plan uh, a campaign yeah. right, against you that might work. Like, yes, yes, you're right. Uh, but, anyways, just to sum up our bottling, whatever we have said, that we've come to a conclusion that uh, there are two views that exist within management that in terms of if business is not going well, where the responsibility lies. Right? One view is referred to as omnipotent view, and the other one is referred to as symbolic. Now, the omnipotent view says that if the performance of an organization is not going to an acceptable level, right, then it is the responsibility is directly like on the shoulders of managers. Right? Now, you can argue on that. You see, there are two views. Right? You can have your point. I mean, if I ask you in your exam, like, uh, based on the scenario that which you, you support, you might have your arguments, right? Uh, but in reality, there are certain jobs in which it has been seen that, uh, where organizations have fired their managers. I mean, it most predominantly happens in sports industry. When your team is not performing, what happens? They try to. Right, so which means in sports industry, this omnipotent view of management is strictly a day to its followed. Right? Uh, similarly, uh, during 90s, right, after 50 years, when in America, when Ford Motor sales risen up uh, and they've beaten uh, General Motors after 50 years, right? General Motors had to revamp their strategies, to, they had to revamp the ways they were uh, uh, conducting their business and as part of those, and one strategy as part of those strategies was to actually shuffle their people and lay off few of their senior managers. Right? So which means they were adhering to what? They were adhering to? But this doesn't work. I mean, this is not always the case. This is not, I mean, they, Remember, we were just talking about that there are certain external challenges in which managers find themselves quite helpless. We cannot do anything. Right? Now, that view is referred to as which says that the, in, view, in, in that view of development, much of the organization success or failure is tied to external forces. Where some of the, but you see, in this view, it it doesn't it doesn't uh, uh, it doesn't give uh, what do you call it? Uh, it doesn't tell managers that you are uh, you are completely the burden is completely off you. It doesn't tell that. It says that yes, you have got environmental complexities, uncertainties, but even in those situations, as a manager, you still got to exercise your skills. You still got to become as a strong figurehead, leader, organizer, and still want to come to the challenges. Right? You want to strategize. Right? Right? So it doesn't buy you out. I mean, it doesn't buy managers out completely that like, okay, it's because of external challenges, so uh, you know it's not your fault. It it says that it is to clearly draw a line, right? That where the responsibility lies on the shoulders of managers, but keeping in view that there are some certain external challenges that might have influence on the business. On the business. Right. So, uh, right, moving on, moving on, where is this going on? And he just goes on to explain only to rent you in a bit more detail, right, which I have explained to you, right? Uh, it, it, as an example, it tells you about sports team coaches, which I have explained to you. Uh, about symbolic view, it, it tells you a few of the external challenges economy, customers, government. Remember the examples we have just discussed these? Industry conditions. What do we mean by industry conditions? Uh, 
industries of another country, like it's a leather industry in Pakistan. Okay, very good. Uh, they were not, they were not just performing, or the quality that they were providing in the national yes, market was not up to the bar as provided by China. Exactly, or exactly. Bangladesh. Then your business is by itself. I mean, in those kind of circumstances, there is very less you can do, uh, or there is very less you can have accountable uh, for this to the right? Uh, similarly, moving on, but uh, from this point onwards, this chapter is all about telling you, remember the management with 